I turned these images into physical 3D prints using AI in under 10 minutes each. And if you stick around, I'll show you my entire process. It's quick, it's easy, and it requires zero 3D modeling experience. So let's get into it. Hello drafters, welcome to the channel that brings 3D printing and AI together. And if you like this video or find value in it, then please consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow. So as you saw in the intro, in this video, I'm going to show you my entire workflow of using AI tools to create 3D models from images. And the tool we're going to be used is something I've discussed in the past, which I was really impressed with, which is HITEM 3D, an amazing imaged 3D modeling tool that you can use right now. Let's set a few expectations so you know exactly what you're going to get from this content. First, the workflow will require no 3D modeling experience and you won't even need to open a CAD program. Having a subscription to ChatGPT or NanoBanana or any of those AI image generation tools will be super handy, but you can even use free alternatives, something as easy as like Google Image Search. Having a 3D printer will of course be an essential tool to this process, Otherwise, you're not going to be able to 3D print your results. But by the time you get to the end of this video, you will have the knowledge on how to create 3D print ready 3D models. So with that out of the way, let's get into exactly what HITEM 3D is. HITEM 3D is an AI powered image to 3D model conversion tool. Its key benefits are that it saves hours of manual modeling work. So it's ideal for 3D printing enthusiasts, designers, and hobbyists. The interface for HITEM 3D is super basic, so it's really easy to get into. Now, before we get into the model creation, we first need images to actually create the 3D models from. And there are certain specifics that you need to be aware of for the best images to use. So let's get into that. In this workflow, I'm going to show you two versions of models that I've created from an image. One is this dragon bust, and another is this doom guy looking character. Now, in my case, I like to use ChatGPT to create my images, but you could use anything. You can even just go to Google and search for something, and I'll get into specifics of what exactly you need in an image. Let's first cover just what I did in ChatGPT. So here I have ChatGPT, and I've just given it a basic prompt, which is create an image of a dragon head bust. It looks like a resin 3D printed model, blank white background. That's all I said, and this is the result it's given me. So as you can see, it looks like a resin printed 3D model. And it's got the bust, like the, the chest cut off, and just the dragon head, and it came out really good. Now some key features about what you need in an image for HITEM 3D to work. I found images that have some sort of 3D depth or look like a 3D model work really well. For example, if you use a 2D cartoon image of Pokemon or something, I find that doesn't work well. But try and stick to one clear detail. So we can see in this image, super refined, lots of detail, and the more we're giving HITAM 3D to build from, the better result you're going to get. Two, you want something that has some sort of depth. So it's either got really good lighting or it's shaded well, or even better like this case, it's basically looks like a 3D model already. And three, things just need to be really well defined. So here we have really defined shapes and features. You can see the dragon scales, you can see its eyes and its teeth and its horns, and that's all going to translate well into high tem 3D. And four, good angles. So this angle is giving us a lot of detail to work from. It's not a direct straight on shot and it's not on the side. It's kind of that 45 degree angle from the front. So that's giving you a nice profile to work from and some sort of nice depth to work from as well. But in my experience, giving it a model like this, it's actually really good at detailing out what is actually behind this image and on the back of the model, which we don't see here. And the second model we're going to look at is this one I did of Doom Guy. And the prompt I gave to this was create a resin 3D printed model of a bust of Doom Guy, blank white background. So we're gonna print this one out as well and also generate a 3D model from to see how it goes. 
Okay, let's now jump over to HiTem 3D and load in these images and see what results we get. Here on the HiTem 3D homepage, when you create an account and you log in, you're going to see this. And it's really basic. I'll go over the UI in a moment. But what you should see is this. And it's asking us to upload an image so that it can create a 3D model. So here you can either drag in and drop in your image. I'm going to grab my dragon image and drop it in like this. We can see some additional options down here. So we have a different version. So 1.5 is the latest and greatest version. The next one is your resolution. So if you want to do something really quick, you can select the lowest option. If you want to go into the highest detail, you want to go to the pro version. You then have an option for texture. So you can apply this so it generates the textures on the model as well, which is really interesting if you're looking to export that and use that in some sort of game ready asset. That's really good. And then you can just click on here to generate and you have some credits, which I'll explain in a moment as well. So first thing, resolution. So here we have four current resolutions, 512, 1024, 1536 and 1536 Pro. And it gives you a little description of what resolution will do for each setting. So for example, 512 is ultra fast, low cost, and it's good for preview and test. Whereas the 1536 Pro is the flagship model, the highest. It has commercial licensing, so you can sell this if you want to. And it's print ready. What I like to do is go to 512 because I want to first test my image to see what sort of result I get. And 512 is the fastest. So it's going to quickly generate a 3D model for me. It's not going to be the best quality, but it's going to be enough to give me an idea of whether it's worth bumping this up to the next resolution to actually create that 3D printable ready file. And on that note, let me quickly explain what the credits are. So on the generate button, you'll see currently it has a little star icon and that's your credits and it's saying 15. If I turn off texture, you can actually see to generate this model at 512, it's only five credits. And if you sign up for an account with the link in my description, you'll actually get 100 credits to start with under your free account. Now, if we actually bump that up to 1536 and we turn the texture off so we can see exactly how much, you can see this is actually 40 credits for 1536. And if we go to 1536 Pro, which is the highest end, it's 60 credits. So there's definitely a jump between low and high, five credits versus 60 credits. So that's why I recommend going to your 512, just spitting out a quick generation generation to see what the results are like then if you're happy you can bump it up to that high resolution now i've already generated this model so if we go to my history we can find it just here now this one was a lower resolution i actually used 1024 for this one and you can see it's it's good detail it's going to be a little softer in some of those crevices and corners but overall you can see the result is really really nice and even behind it's got all those details of the horns and the scales coming through but we can see in the reference image it's got a lot of detail in those scales as well a lot of cuts and scratches and stuff which this doesn't really have. So even this we could 3D print on a small scale or even a big scale and it'll be really good. One other thing is you actually get free retries. So if you're not really happy with the result or it's got some weird artifact, you can retry this three times before you actually have to pay for credits or use your credits to generate an entirely new one. Now, if we go to this one, which I used the 1536 Pro model for the highest flagship model, we can see we're now starting to get some really defined features through the face so the other model it didn't have all these scales through the face it was a bit softer so here it's really bumped it up it's got a lot more refinement on those scales around the body even on the horns it's more defined with the horns so this is what your flagship resolution is going to look like and this is 3d printable ready now here is an example of an image that didn't work. So here we got Pikachu. I downloaded this from Google Images, just a Pikachu on a white background, has some depth, not really a 3D model, but not just a flat 2D cartoon either. And you can see it just didn't quite work. So the tail, like it's trying to generate its own tail, thinking it was a creature, but then it's got like a weird lightning bolt coming off. And you might be able to work as a base from this and build a Pikachu from it, but I'm not gonna be 3D printing this one, that's for sure. Here is another one I did, this one I've actually Actually done textures on so this is the reference image I asked ChatGPT to create a Christmas monster inspired 3d model and then I fed that into high and the result is really cool so this is the 
second highest resolution, the 1536. You could potentially 3D print this as well. It's something I'm going to explore in a future video of how to actually segment this down into 3D printable colors so that you can get a lot more detail in your 3D colored prints. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that kind of content. Okay, going back into our main page, I'm going to import our Doom Guy and we're going to generate a model for this. So I'm going to do the 1536 Pro, no texture because it's just flat gray. We don't want that. And we're going to generate and we're going to see what result we get with this. So while that is generating, let me give you a quick tour around HITAM 3D. On the main HITAM 3D page is what you see here. It's pretty basic. So you'll have your history, which I've already showed you. You can see my model is generating here. There is a blog page that will take you to another page and from here you can check out some competitions that they're doing so worth checking out the blog and staying in tune with that and finally the multi view to 3d which I touched on before where you can actually load in multiple images from different angles to create an even more detailed or more exact 3d model for what you want so here you can have a front view and then you also have a back view left view and right view and then you can generate from that and it doesn't cost you any extra credits for that but it's definitely going to give you way more detail now you also have a portrait mode, similar thing. You have image to 3D, multi view to 3D. And I haven't used portrait as much yet, so I should jump into that later on and see what exactly it's all about. Okay, we are back with our results for the generation of our Doom Guy bust, and it's looking really cool. So here is the original image that we fed HITEM 3D, and this is the result. And you can see it's got a lot of detail, and of course, as you go around to the back, plenty of detail in here as well. Something I haven't covered actually is how do you actually navigate in HITEM 3D, and it's really simple. So with your mouse, left clicking and dragging is going to rotate the model around. Zooming in and out can be done on the scroll wheel of the mouse and holding down the right mouse button and dragging around is how you pan. So rotate, zoom and pan. It's as simple as that. Another thing to mention is like I explained before because we generated without a texture because it's just going to end up doing a flat gray texture as a result. But if you did want to generate textures from something that had texture in it from your image, you do still have that option. So you can generate texture by clicking down here after you've actually created a model. So that's nice as well. Finally, we can share our result as well. So if you click on the share button, it's going to come up like this. And the cool thing is that you actually get credits as it says here, earn 10 credits each time a new user registers through your shared link. You can earn up to 50 credits per day from sharing. So that's cool. And you can allow downloads as well on or off in case you just want to share the model for someone to view it but you don't want them to actually download you can turn that on and off and read topology is another new feature that's in beta right now and then you finally have some different ways of actually showing your model as well so you can check out the wireframe the normals and just texture off of course the next thing we want to do is export this model and then import it into our slice of software so we can actually 3d print our mini model command and clicking on format and going to SDL or OBJ. SDL is great for 3D printing, but it's only just going to be the model itself. It doesn't actually cost any credits to download a model, which is good. So we just click on download. It begins and it will download into your default folder. And we're going to go back to our Dragon model as well. Again, you can see it defaults to GLB, so just change that if you need to and done. All right, let's move on to the next section, the fun part, which is 3D printing. So let's jump over and I'm going to use Bamboo Studio in this case because I'll be using my bamboo printers in the background. This process is going to be very similar for any 3D printer you have because a lot of the slicing software is very similar now because they kind of all forked off the same base program. In this case, we got Bamboo Studio, which is the slicer software for Bamboo Lab printers. So you should be looking at a build plate and we'll want to import our model into the slicer. So you can do that either by dragging the file in or you can just import it from your file. So we're going to do that. And in my case, it always says that it's do you want to scale it to millimeters? I'm going to say yes. And we're looking at the dragon bust first and we need to rotate this to the correct position so we can use our rotate tools to just flip this around that. And then I'm going to turn it around to the front as well. 
And something else I want to do is because the bottom of this is not completely flat, I want a nice flat base on it. So I'm going to slice this. So I click on the model and then we want to go to cut. I'm going to bring this right down to the bottom. And now we've got a cut nice flat plane on the bottom and we don't want to keep the bottom one. So we don't need to keep object B, but we want to keep object A. We want to keep the orientation. Oh, we actually want to place on cut because we know it's a nice smooth surface now. And then it's going to create some non-manifold edges, which basically means there's going to be holes in the model and you always want a model to be closed when you 3D print it. So we can say yes, and that should enable the repair tool in your slicer and allow that to work its magic. And at the moment, this model is really small. So I'm going to scale this up a bit so we can go to our scale tool and we might make this 300% larger which gives us a height of be the Z, so 136 mil. I may even go bigger, I'll see how it goes. Something else I wanna do with this particular model is I actually have this really cool wood filament that I wanna try out. So I've got that in my H2S loaded up. I'm going to apply that to my model. And I'm going to, actually one thing I wanna do, something else that's really good for these models is to use a, it's up here, it's called the variable layer height. Apply that, we go to adaptive and then smooth that out. What's that doing? It's detecting lines where it can create areas of thicker lines to where it doesn't need a lot of detail. And then as something sort of curves, it'll start to make the lines smaller or the layer height smaller so that the detail gets captured. So it's really good for these sort of models where there's a lot of variation in the detail as it goes through and a lot of changes in angle. Another thing we need is of course supports. We can enable our supports tree is going to be fine and we'll slice plate and just see what this comes in. It's looking like six hours, 20 minutes for this print, but I want to improve that a bit. Something else I need to change is probably change the layer height to 24 or 0.24 and go back to prepare. We need to redo our variable layer height because it has more range to work in now. And I also want to set my strength. We want to change our infill pattern. I'm just going to go for a cross hatch and I think 10% should be fine because it doesn't need much internal fill or strength. It's just more of a display. I'm going to bump this up just a little bit bigger in the scale. I'm going to go, let's go big now. Let's go 400. This is going to be a big drag. So we've got our result coming in now. It's going to be seven hours for this. It's going to use 178 grams of filament. So you know what? I'm going to go for it. This is a, a pretty cool model and I'd like to see what this looks like in a bit of a larger scale. So once you're ready, all you need to do is go to print plate and then send your print. That's going to go after the printer. I'm not going to start it yet because that will start making a bit of noise in the background, but I also want to jump over to Doom Guy and do the same thing. So just to run you through it again, this is the Doom Guy. And again, we're just going to rotate this so it's in an upright position and it's already facing forward, which is nice. We need to now cut this. So we use our cut tool, drop this way down, bring it up just a tiny bit. We're going to perform cut. We don't need to keep this second object and you can usually tell by the colors of the blue is the top one, magenta enters the bottom one which is right down the bottom perform cut in this case it's not going to say there's manifold edges so that's fine we're going to scale this up let's make it 300 percent or make sure our layer height is the 0.24 this time we need to change my printer as well because i have two printers here so i want to use my x1c sync my filaments i think the supports are going to be less on this one uh, we want to do our adaptive layers as well especially for this one it's got a lot of curvature in these features so it's going to really work well in this one strength we need to drop this down so again we're going to go cross hatch just 10 percent we need to turn our support and we'll use tree slice that see what that comes in at okay another seven hour print it's less filament in this case 119 grams which is pretty good might be hard to see on screen but see the supports going up there just supporting the shoulders a few areas on the back so i am pretty happy with that all right well that's the end of this slicer section so i'm going to send those to the print so let's Fast forward to see what the results are like. Once the prints were complete, it was just a matter of removing the prints from the 3D printer. You can take them off the build plates by simply flexing them and then the prints just pop off. Now, I'll have to admit that the supports were quite tedious and a bit of a pain to remove on these models. And that's simply because these models aren't best suited for an FDM printer like the ones I have but the results they gave were still really stunning. And I can only imagine if I had a resin printer that you could get some really cool results from high temp 3D and printing them out on a resin printer. 
It just goes to show with these AI tools, with just a bit of imagination and creativity, some prompt engineering into ChatGPT or NanoBanana to generate the images, and then just feeding that into Hitem 3D to do all that modeling work for you. Pretty much goes straight to a 3D model that's ready for 3D printing like you've seen today. So that's all from this video. I hope you found value in it. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel and thanks for watching.